Hey everyone, so we meet again for text 667 session. We still at chapter 4, text for specialized industries. As we have covered the first part of this chapter, the real estate investment trust. So for this session, in this video, I will only focus on the second part of chapter 4, which is investment holding companies, IHC. First of all, let's look at the learning outcome. As mentioned earlier, the three, the, the first three belong to uh, REITs. We have already covered that uh, before. So the focus for this video is only the uh, outcome number four, five, and six, which is you should be able to define what is IHC, company yang macam mana yang dikira sebagai investment holding companies and identify the criteria for being an IHC yang tu first outcome second outcome for this video is you should be able to explain the tax treatment for investment holding companies and the last one hopefully by the end of this video or this lesson you should be able to compute the income tax payable for IHC. Alright. As for the introduction, what is IHC? Investment holding companies is a company whose okay, tengok eh, ada dua kriteria dia. Yang pertama, the main activities consist mainly in the holding of investment. Before this, kita dah tengok uh, Real Estate Investment Trust. Untuk REITs, main activity dia adalah letting of real property. Semua yang berkaitan dengan uh, hartanah. While untuk investment holding companies, the main activity should consist of holding of investment. Pegangan pelaburan. And not less than 80% of its gross income other than gross income from a source of consisting of a business of holding of an investment whether exempt or not is derived from the holding of those investment so the sentence is quite long and a bit uh, tricky here but then the gist of this sentence is the point yang dia cuba untuk sampaikan adalah IHC kena make sure lebih daripada 80% of its gross income derived from holding of investment, not from the business of holding of investment. So, you mungkin rasa macam benda yang sama, tapi sebenarnya these two item adalah berbeza. Kita akan tengok apa yang membezakan holding of investment dengan the business of holding of investment in the next slide. Okay, the first part, holding of investment here, yang belah kiri ni, kita nak tengok similar or difference dengan the business of holding of investment. By definition, a business of holding of investment is a business of letting of real property where a company in any YA provides comprehensive maintenance services. Okay, dia kata dia akan jadi business of holding of investment kalau that company ada sewakan real property and at the same time, dekat real property tu, business provide comprehensive maintenance services. Yang tu dikira sebagai business of holding of investment. Okay, nak make it easier, let's say kita ada real property. So, dia invest dalam real property. Sekadar itu sahaja, buat investment dalam bentuk hartanah. That one is considered as holding of investment, pegangan pelaburan. At the same time, kalau business tu dia ada hartanah, dia invest dalam hartanah pada masa yang sama juga, 
dekat that real property tu the business provide comprehensive maintenance dekat hartanah tu dia bagi park guard ada security services lepas tu ada maintenance ada tangga lift kena bayar every month maintenance fee that one is considered as comprehensive maintenance services so dia dah fall into the category of business of holding of investment not a holding of investment anymore dah jadi satu bentuk perniagaan sebab dia provide comprehensive uh, maintenance services okey so untuk uh, nak jadikan sesuatu company tu sebagai sebuah IHC dia kata kena make sure holding of investment tu uh, contributes to 80% of you punya total income. So tak boleh uh, dapat income daripada business of holding of investment. Kita nak make sure yang income yang dia dapat tu daripada this one. Bukannya daripada business of holding of investment. Okay. Make sure you got it clear supaya you tak confuse yang this company tu income dia daripada investment holding ataupun from the business of holding of investment. Okay, let us continue lagi. Uh, let's look at the criteria of uh, investment holding companies. Yang tadi first-first kali kita tengok dekat dia punya main activity. Make sure activity dia adalah holding of investment. Yang tu fulfill the first criteria. Second one, dia kata kena make sure lebih daripada 80% of company's gross income should be derived from holding of investment. Nampak eh? Highlight sikit perkataan holding of investment. Dan tadi kita dah tahu dah beza holding of investment dengan business of holding of investment. Make sure income you 80% ataupun lebih datang daripada holding of investment. Bukannya business of holding of investment. Okay? Okay. To make ourselves lagi uh, faham pasal determination of IHC status ni, this one I provide you illustration. Let's look at company A dulu. Dia ada rent dalam bentuk business RM85,000. Rent non-business tak ada. Dividend RM5,000. Interest RM10,000. So, total gross income dia kat sini kita ada RM100,000. Okay, so nak kira cukup tak 80% of gross income tu dapat daripada investment holding ataupun business of investment holding. Kita nak tengok holding of investment, uh, this one daripada dalam bentuk dividend, yes. Interest pun investment, yes. Therefore, calculation dia 15,000 over 1,000. Kita hanya dapat sebanyak 15% sahaja. Since only 50% of the gross income derived from holding of investment, company A is not an IHC. Okay. Yang tu company yang pertama. Sekarang, let's look at company B pula. Rent, business, RM20,000. Rent, non-business, tak ada. Dividend 50,000, interest 30,000. Total gross income 100,000. So, bila nak kira yang mana yang melibatkan investment holding, I have 50k here and 30k here. So, bila kita kira the percentage, we have 80%, 80%. Is company B is an Uh, IHC jawapan dia yes sebab dia cukup 80% ataupun lebih daripada gross income derived from uh, holding of investment 
Okay. Yang tu company B. Sekarang let's move to company C. Rent business tak ada. Rent non business 75,000. Dividend 10,000. Interest 5,000. Management services fee 10,000. Total gross income here kita ada 100,000. So kita nak tengok mana antara income dia ni belong to holding of investment. This one rent non business yang ni yes 75000 dividend yes 10000 interest 5000 management services fee is it related to investment tak sebabnya dia hanya dapat this fee hasil daripada uh, buat kerja-kerja pengurusan kan so total investment uh, income kita 75 campur 10 campur 5 kita ada 90. So, 90%. Therefore, company C is considered as investment holding companies. Alright. Okay. Kita tengok lagi satu supaya lagi faham. Company D, rent business. So, dia dapat rental. Tapi dalam uh, rental tu dikira sebagai business income. Sebab mungkin dia provide comprehensive maintenance. So, this one dah jadi sebagai business of holding of investment. So, dia tak boleh masuk kan? Yang ni RM20,000 masih lagi rental but non-business. Yang ni holding of investment, yes. Dividend, yes. Interest also, yes. Jadi, bila nak kira percentage 20K plus 10K plus 20K, I only have 50% sahaja. Less than 80%. So, company D is not an IHC. Okay. So, untuk company E, rasanya you boleh tengok sendiri. Based on four companies here, rasanya uh, should be enough lah untuk you um, lebih faham macam mana cara untuk determine whether that company is IHC or not. Okay, uh, we still at the criteria of IHC. Still nak uh, test you punya uh, uh, apa ability, whether you know or not that company is investment holding company or, uh, ataupun tak. So, kita tengok example 1. Jordan Lee uh, started business 2012. Pastu so, dia punya main activity is investment uh, in several companies. Highlighter. Okay, main activity dia adalah uh, ni investment in several companies and fixed deposit. So uh, first criteria uh, main activity adalah investment. Yes, betul. Pastu so, dia kata dia receive dividend income from the investment in those company and fixed deposit interest. So, kalau you tengok income dia dalam bentuk dividend, dividend is investment holding and as well as interest. Interest pun uh, investment juga. So, kalau kita kira, uh, kiranya 100% uh, of dia punya income tu adalah dalam Hmm, bentuk holding of investment So, kita boleh katakan yang Jordan Lee ni adalah IHC Sebab kriteria pertama Aktiviti fulfill uh, Income lapan, lebih 80% Datang dalam bentuk hmm, Investment holding Fulfill juga So, Jordan Lee dikira sebagai Investment holding company Okay, example number two, sawit. Sawit main activity is all palm. Tanam kelapa sawit. Uh, dia buat peladangan lah, plantation. Apart from that, dia also invest in several companies. So, main activity tanam kelapa sawit. Lepas tu, at the same time, uh, buat juga some investment dalam beberapa company as well as fixed deposit in several banks. In year 2014, company receive interest, interest investment, 10,000 from fixed deposit. 
and company has not generated any income. So, kalau you tengok dari segi sini, kiranya 100% of dia punya income adalah investment. However, first criteria sawit ni, main activity dia buat oil pump, tanam kelapa sawit. So, first criteria dia tak meet up, jadi kita boleh katakan this company sawit senderam berhad ni not IHC. Walaupun kriteria number 2 dia fulfill, tapi kriteria number 1, main activity is not in investment holding. So, masih lagi bukan dikira sebagai investment holding company. Okay, yang ni pula third example. Pelaburan Mekar started business 2013, main activity is holding of investment. Therefore, first criteria, check. Betul kan? Dia betul-betul buat aktiviti dia mainly dalam holding of investment. PMSB receive dividend. Dividend is investment income, 10000 uh, And apart from dividend, PMSB also receive management fee. Management fee, is it investment? Tak. Management fee hanyalah uh, income yang kita dapat hasil daripada uh, admin, pengurusan. Nothing to do with you punya investment. So, kalau you nak kira percentage dia 10k over total 10 campur 20, 30k. Kita baru dapat dalam 33%. Is pelaburan Mekar uh, NIHC? So, jawapan dia, dia bukan IHC. Reason, walaupun main activity is the holding of investment, kriteria nombor satu tu check. However, the percentage of income derived from holding of investment is lesser than 80% of gross income. Baru 33%. So, pelaburan mekar tidak dikira sebagai uh, syarikat pegangan pelaburan IHC. Okey, uh, sekarang uh, kita nak tengok uh, the tax treatment for IHC. Tadi dah pandai dah bezakan uh, whether that company is having a status of IHC or not. Sekarang kita nak tengok macam mana kita nak treat tax untuk IHC. So, untuk this one, we have to determine first whether the IHC is a listed uh, or non-listed in Bursa Malaysia. Okay, kalau listed, uh, dia company yang berhad, okay, uh, kita akan refer kepada section 60FA. While for unlisted IHC, Dia IHC tapi tidak disenaraikan di Bursa Malaysia. The section relevant is section 60F. Okay, kita akan tengok in detail apa yang membezakan listed and unlisted IHC. Okay, kalau kita ada listed IHC income from all sources. Tak kisah you punya income whether dalam bentuk interest, dividend, rental, as well as management fee, semua sekali kita akan lam bawah section 4A. Semua, tak kisah. Dia dah tak ada dah uh, separation of section. Tak ada dah 4A, 4B, 4C. Yang ada hanyalah satu section sahaja, section 4A. Everything you akan letakkan under section 4A. Yang tu untuk listed IHC. While, kalau non-listed, kita masih ada classification of uh, income. Interest and dividend dikira sebagai investment income. We going to put it under section 4C. Rental income under section 4D. And non-investment income such as management fee, 
uh, income yang tak ada kaitan langsung dengan pelaburan will be treated as other income under section 4F. This one is the different, uh, first difference between the treatment for listed IHC and non-listed IHC. Kalau listed, every income, setiap satu tu, tak kisahlah dia belong to which sources, dia akan terus masukkan dalam 4A. Ada satu section sahaja. While non-listed IHC, kita akan classify accordingly. Investment income macam interest and dividend, kita letak bawah 4C. Rental, letak bawah 4D. And management fee, dikira sebagai other income under section 4F. Okay, next kita nak tengok pula macam mana nak treat common expenses. Okay, so common expenses here. For listed IHC, expenses are deductible in arriving to the adjusted income. Common expenses are fully apportioned. So, nama pun common, maksudnya satu expenses tu belong to few uh, sources of income. Okay, kita ada satu jenis expenses, mungkin uh, dia ada sedikit portion untuk rental, sedikit portion untuk interest, Or sedikit portion untuk uh, dividend. So what we need to do, kita akan fully a portion. Kita akan a portion. But uh, the amount uh, deductible is restricted to the available gross income. So dia kata kita boleh tolak based on what we have a portion before. But then nilai yang nak ditolak tu akan dilimitkan kepada berapa gross income untuk setiap satu uh, source. Common expenses relating to dividend are specifically not deductible. So, untuk common expenses yang belong to dividend memang tidak dibenarkan untuk tolak. Okay, yang tu cara nak treat common expenses for listed IHC. How about uh, non-listed IHC? Kita akan ada common expenses juga tapi dia letakkan ataupun dia termkan sebagai permitted expenses. Okay. Permitted expenses is deductible. Boleh tolak. Tolak daripada mana? Against aggregate income in arriving at total income. So, cara nak kira permitted expenses, it will be the lower of yang mana lagi rendah antara dua ni. Ha, lepas tu dah bagi pula dekat kita formula. A darab B over 4C and you going to compare with 5% of gross taxable income. Mana satu yang lagi rendah antara dua ni yang ni akan dikira sebagai permitted expenses. Any unabsorbed permitted expenses cannot be carry forward. Okay, so sekarang dah pening lah kan. Apakah itu A, what is B and what is C. Tiba-tiba je nak ambil yang mana lagi rendah. In the next slides, kita akan tengok what does it mean by A, income mana yang dikira sebagai B, And items yang macam mana dikira sebagai kategori C. Okay, here uh, is what I mean by permitted expenses. Masih ingat lagi, dia punya formula tadi, dia kata A darab B over 4C. Okay, let's look at A. A adalah total permitted expenses. Expenses yang macam mana dikira sebagai permitted Here we have director's fee, wages, salary and allowance, management fees, secretarial audit and accounting fees, telephone charges, printing, stationery costs and postage, rent and other expenses incidental to the maintenance of an office. So kalau you tengok dekat sini permitted expenses, 
uh, generally dia adalah business expenses dan semua jenis expenses yang berkaitan dengan uh, pengurusan kan, management. Okey, kita tengok B pula. B dia maksudkan sebagai gross investment income chargeable to tax. Kita akan hanya ambil investment income. So, investment income kita ada interest. Lagi satu kita ada dividend. Tapi dia kata dia nak Investment income yang chargeable to tax. So, kita tahu kalau dividend, dividend single tier. Dividend is exempted. Therefore, dividend tak boleh masuk bawah B. Kita hanya akan ambil interest sahaja. Sebab B is investment income chargeable to tax. Dividend exempted. Okay, C pula. C is aggregate of gross investment income. Tak kisahlah taxable or exempted. Apa-apa sahaja income yang berkaitan dengan investment, we have interest, dividend. Tak kisah dia kena bayar tax ataupun dikecualikan daripada tax plus gains from the realization of investment. Yang ni, dua ni dikira sebagai C but you should, you have to be aware This one kita nak empat kali C. Alright. So, nak kira PE, ambil this uh, formula. A darab B over 4C. Comparekan dengan 5% of B. So, PE adalah whichever is lower. Antara dua ni. Yang mana lagi rendah. Yang tu akan jadi you punya permitted expenses. You're going to deduct from aggregate income to arrive at total income. Alright, next, uh, we're going to look at the tax treatment of IHC with regard to direct expenses. Direct expenses incurred in the production of, of income. Okay. Kalau tadi is common expenses, sekarang ni kita nak tengok macam mana kita nak treat direct expenses. For both listed and non-listed rates, uh, sama treatment dia, expenses are deductible, boleh tolak. Non-listed expenses also deductible against each source of income. So, kalau expenses tu, let's say directly related in the production of dividend or interest income kita akan tolak against dividend or interest kalau expenses tu incurred uh, related to rental so kita tolak tolak daripada mana tolak daripada rental income but restricted to the amount of gross income so masih lagi ada uh, limitation boleh tolak tapi sebanyak mana Income yang ada sahaja. Expenses related to single tier dividend are specifically not deductible. So, regardless of uh, the IHC is listed or non-listed, treatment untuk direct expenses sama, boleh tolak. However, limited to the amount of gross income and expenses yang berkait terus dengan dividend is specifically not deductible. Tak boleh tolak kalau expenses tu berkait dengan dividend. Next one, kita nak tengok treatment for uh, capital allowance. For listed IHC, since uh, semua income kita letakkan bawah section 4A, dia dikira sebagai business source, therefore CAR Allow. Untuk listed IHC, remember, semua jenis income, tak kisahlah dia interest, rental, dividend, management fee, semua letak lamsam terus bawah 4A. So, kita dibenarkan untuk tolak CA, capital allowance. But, any unabsorbed CA cannot be carried forward to subsequent years. Kalau you tak habis guna CA that year, Tak boleh nak bawa ke tahun-tahun depan. 
yang tu untuk listed uh, IHC. For non-listed IHC, kita akan kategoriskan income ikut dia punya section. Interest and dividend for C, rental for D, management fee, management fee is uh, under other income bawah section 4F. Tak ada pun section 4A kan. Therefore, capital allowances cannot be claimed. Kenapa tak boleh claim CA? Sebab tak ada pun income bawah section 4A untuk non-listed IHC. So, we have come to the end of this uh, video. I have explained uh, on how to determine whether that company is IHC or not. We have two criteria. Make sure the main activity is the holding of investment and at least 80% of gross income is derived from the holding of investment, not from the business of holding of investment. Yang tu first outcome. Second outcome, kita tengok juga beberapa treatment uh, berkenaan dengan income. Kita tengok common expenses, direct expenses as well as the availability of CA untuk IHC. Treatment dia berbeza uh, depending on the status of that IHC whether IHC tu listed ataupun non-listed in Bursa Malaysia and last sekali outcome dia you should be able untuk compute uh, income tax payable for IHC that one I akan uh, prepare another video showing you on how to compute income tax for listed IHC and lagi satu how to compute income tax for unlisted IHC. So, uh, I'll see you again in another video. Okay, thank you.